Hello, Father's Faithful. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School, and Merry Christmas to you today. I'd like to talk about Christmas, of course, in this lesson today. Last week, we talked about Mary's song, and we talked about the very first Christmas carol. We talked about how this young woman named Mary had such confidence in God and expressed such joy in these extreme circumstances of the birth of our Savior. Think about this. Mary was young, and she was pregnant, and she was not married. So how in the world did she have the strength of spirit to say yes to God under such challenging circumstances? Well, for one thing, she had a yielded heart. Having a heart that was willing to surrender to God's plan helped her to surrender to God completely when she recognized herself as a servant, and she bravely agreed to be the mother of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Luke one thirty eight says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. I always think about that every Christmas. May it be to me as you have said. How hard is that sometimes for us to do that? Even though we know that God has a perfect plan, sometimes we are so stubborn and sometimes we want things to happen our way. But Mary said, may it be to me as you have said. May we all say that this Christmas. She also had a faithful heart. She was certain that God kept his promises and she believed that God was trustworthy if we read a little bit of Mary's song again, we start in the book of Luke chapter 1. Let's start with verse 45. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And then let's read a few verses of her song again. And Mary said, My song praises the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Now, we know that Joseph also had a yielded heart and a faithful heart because Joseph could have made a public spectacle of Mary, but he didn't. Instead, Mary and Joseph head to Bethlehem in Judea because Caesar Augustus wanted to take a census of the whole Roman world. And so Mary and Joseph traveled to this place where it had been prophesied that the Messiah would be born right there in a stable. And the shepherds who were out in the field with some sheep were urged by an angel to go and find the Messiah baby who was wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Luke 2.19 says, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary treasured God's words to her. When we think about treasuring and reflecting and actively remembering what God had spoken to her through Gabriel and the Holy Scriptures, one of the definitions of the word treasured is to preserve a thing from perishing or being lost. When we fix God's words in our minds and we talk about them day and night, we remind ourselves to believe. In Deuteronomy, I'm reading in my regular Bible reading right now, I've read many, many times over and over that we should talk about the Lord's Word when we're at home, when we're away. We should hang it on our door frames. We should teach it to our children. That's what it means to ponder and treasure God's Word. But the reverse is true too. Without the practice of treasuring, we can lose God's words. If we don't remember what He's done, if we forget what He's promised, then those promises may be lost to us. And although every word that he has ever spoken remains true, Isaiah 48 tells us that, if we fail to treasure 
and to ponder what he said, then his promises can be lost from our minds and from our hearts. And when we fail to remember those promises, we gradually drift away from God. If our gaze is not on the Lord Jesus Christ daily, then we wonder. Our minds wonder. Our bodies wonder. We are easily distracted. And before we know it, we're going down other paths and we're not even considering our direction, especially our direction to God. We're unsure of where we are on the map or maybe we've lost the map altogether and we find ourselves just chasing the wind. First Samuel twelve twenty one says, you must not turn aside for then you would go after futile things which cannot profit or deliver because they are futile. Mary did not turn aside because she treasured God's promises. The very act that she pondered God's words over and over in her mind kept Mary's heart steadfast to her calling and firmly secure in God's purposes for her life. She didn't veer off course because her mind and heart were continually rehearsing God's word. So, what are you pondering in your heart today? I read about a lady who was intensely frustrated with a family member. As she weeded her garden one Saturday morning, she said she let her mind wander to this person. And she said she kept rehearsing in her mind and pondering the wrong that this man had done and how arrogant he was and how misguided he was. And she said she didn't even notice what she was doing to her own heart. She said she was in auto mode and her thoughts were running rampant and she was pondering every wrong thing that he had ever done. And she said when she eventually gained consciousness again, she realized that her heart was kind of running amok there. She was thinking things that she didn't need to think. And so she said as she pulled the very next weed, she heard God say, well, you have some weeding to do too on the inside. So singing praises is not what she was doing with her thoughts that day. She said she was really cursing and she created this darkness in her heart that brought on this self-pity and this hopelessness. She said her hope was choked out by weeds, weeds of despair and weeds of anger and weeds of bitterness. She said her emotions followed her thoughts down into the spiral of despair and she had some misguided ponderings that poisoned her thoughts that day. But Mary, praise God, gratitude replaced cursing. And that will keep us out of the pits that we dig for ourselves if we stay thankful to God and trust in his plan for our lives. You know, I have learned through the years that we have to consciously tune into the ponderings of our hearts too. You know, I have a choice about what I ponder and what I treasure, the thoughts that I turn over in my mind. Mary's heart was fixed on God. Her ponderings were focused on God's word and not on those what ifs that lurk in the shadows, those what ifs that taunt us to doubt and fear and to turn away from God's promises. We do that to ourselves and that's not a good thing. But spending time in God's word fills our minds and our hearts with his truth and we praise him with our lips and that equips us to respond with this unwavering yes to whatever God calls us to do in our lives. When we know that he is good and that he loves us and he cares what happens to us, then we too know that we're called and we can walk fearlessly into the future. And we can do that with confidence and that confidence begins with pondering and treasuring God and his plan for our lives and our hearts. So the truth is that pondering requires less than full understanding too 
Did you think about that? If you fully understand something, then there is no need to ponder it. But Mary pondered. The one who knew more about what was going on than any other human or animal or angel found herself surrounded with a baby given to her by God. A husband who loved her. He could have left her, but he didn't. And this birth of a baby in a strange town in a strange place and a bunch of lower class shepherds showing up to look at her firstborn and talk about the angel proclamations, something with which she had had personal experience too. All of these things Mary pondered. You know, I believe that the greatest thing that the church offers as we come together to worship on Christmas is the opportunity to experience the mystery of the birth of Jesus Christ. We can't completely explain it because we're human. We don't understand everything about it, but Jesus was fully divine. We can't even really describe the virgin birth or the angelic host or the shepherds who became the proclaimers of the birth of the baby Jesus. We can't explain that new star in the sky and we can't explain everything about that holy night, but we can ponder the mystery of it and we can trust in the one who does know exactly everything about that mystery. And if you can ponder it, then perhaps you'll decide to accept that mystery, to follow that mystery, to follow the God who knows everything about that mystery of that holy day. We can follow him like the shepherds did. And just like the shepherds this Christmas, we can find Jesus. I'd like for you to join me in praying for some people today. Please remember the following people on your prayer list. Pray for Pat. Pray for Missy and Darren. Pray for Dolores and April and Leon. Keep Butch and Peggy on your prayer list. Pray for Adam and Meredith. Pray for my friend Doris and pray for Susan. Pray for my mother Shirley. Pray for Holden. There are so many people on our prayer list at church. Pray for Evelyn. Pray for Martha. Um, pray for Dora. I could go on and on. You have your own prayer list too. And the Lord knows who they are. So will you pray with me? Father, we come to you with grateful hearts for this beautiful, beautiful Christmas season. Lord, we thank you for the Savior born in that lowly manger. We thank you for the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough to send your Son. And Lord, today I just pray that we will glorify you and rejoice in the gift of your Son. Father, we also pray for these people that we mentioned, those who we say aloud and those who are in our hearts. Lord, you know who they are. Lord, bring healing, bring grace and mercy and comfort and peace and strength to these people who need you so desperately this Christmas day. Lord, for those who are lonely, for those who are grieving, Lord, I pray especially for them. Lord, it's a hard, hard season for a lot of people. But Lord, I pray that your light will shine in their lives. And Lord, that you will bring joy in spite of sorrow this Christmas. Father, as we celebrate today, we thank you for our church, Bethel Church. We thank you for Pastor Reuben and his family. We pray you continue to guide him and direct him so he can lead his people straight to you. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you once again for joining me for Sunday School. I hope you have a fabulous day and a wonderful Christmas and a good week, and I'll see you next week.